Welcome to our latest video and thank you for watching. This video is the first in our weekly series that we're starting up based on Techie Smart's Tech Toolbox. I get the question a lot through our blog or YouTube channel, through Twitter, email, things of that nature, asking what are some of the utilities and tools that I use for basic computer problems and basic computer fixes. That's essentially what these videos are going to be about. Is Each week I will try to discuss one specific tool that I use and maybe step through one of the reasons I use it. Um, my goal for this video series is to be a reliable source of information to point you in a direction to use these tools. None of these tools that I will use are expensive, none of them are, are trialware that has, you know, you can use them but you can't fully do the repair until you buy them. That's not my aim. My aim here is to be able to point people in the right direction to either use an open source, you know, fix, whether it be a Windows based software, whether it be Linux based. Um, there are a bunch of tools out there and we're going to try to go through those each week and uh, touch in on ones that I've personally used in the past. This week we're going to cover Linux CDs, live Linux CDs. I do use numerous CDs, numerous bootable CDs, whether they be Trinity Rescue Kit, the Ultimate Boot CD, some things like that. But primarily I like to keep at least one or two, maybe three different versions of a live Linux CD. Uh, right now, currently, I try to keep on me a Nopix live CD and an Ubuntu live CD. You can see that right now I've got the Nopix screen up. Um, the reason I like Nopix is it's great for older hardware. It does a great hardware detection. It doesn't require a whole lot of overhead to run. So you're not going to have to worry about running you know, Nopix with a heavier system. I am, of course, using this Nopix live CD on a VirtualBox setup. What we're going to do today is demonstrate why I use Nopix and then later on in the video we'll touch in why I use Ubuntu as a live CDs. But essentially my goal in this video is I have a Windows 7 virtual machine hard drive which will act just as a standard hard drive and we're going to pretend that it doesn't boot. This is a dual boot system. It runs Ubuntu and Windows 7 and we're going to focus on Windows 7 for the time being. If you boot up Nopix 6.7, which is one of the more recent versions of Nopix, this is the default environment that you'll see. It runs a, uh, a very minimal desktop environment, so it doesn't take a whole lot of system to run, which is good for older computers. Now, first thing we need to do is go ahead and launch the file manager. You'll notice we have some options down here on the left-hand window pane on the file manager. Uh, a handful of these point to the Nopix Live CD file system. So we're not going to be concerned with those at all right now. You'll notice that we have three other partitions here. One is SDB1, SDA2, and SDA3. SDA2 is my Windows 7 partition, and SDA3 is the Ubuntu 11.10 partition that I have installed. As I mentioned earlier, this is a dual boot machine. SDB1 is my external storage. It's my flash drive. So our point is to one make sure we can get into our Windows 7 partition and extract some pictures in this example. We're going to move those pictures to SDB1 which is of course the external flash drive. So first off we need to make sure we can see both of them in the file manager which we can and I need to select SDA2. Once we select SDA2 we can navigate through the file manager just like we would under Windows find our files that we want to pull off and, uh, and save and we can move those over to the external storage. This can be a timely process, especially if you're working on somebody else's computer, as not everybody likes to store their files in a somewhat organized manner. Um, I've worked on some machines where files are scattered throughout the, the hard drive. I've worked on others where people keep everything nice and neat in the My Documents folder, in the My Pictures, My Videos, things of that nature. Uh, so it really depends on what you're working on and your situation. So. In this situation, I know we're using Windows 7. I know where my pictures are. They're stored in my pictures library. If you notice, if we try to navigate into my user folder in Windows 7, we can't do it. It says we do not have proper permissions. Uh, so what we need to do is click back, and we need to come up to the top. Simply click on the Tools menu option and go down to Open Current Folder as Root. What this will do is give us super user rights to do what we need to do. Do be careful if you're using the super user rights as you can change a lot of things that you might not necessarily need to mess with. Uh, so just do be cautious with that. Now just simply navigate through the file explorer and find the file you want to rescue. As I mentioned earlier, I'm trying to save a couple of pictures um, from the pictures library in Windows 7. So I'll just navigate to that folder. 
I'm going to left click on the folder and come to edit and go to copy. You can also right click on this as well and uh, select copy from there also. Now if we move this window down, go to our previous file explorer, click on our external storage and try to paste that file in here, you're going to notice it gives us a problem. The reason being, that version of file explorer doesn't have super user rights. So if we go ahead and choose the same option to use it as root, you'll notice if we click back into our super user file explorer, we have two tabs, one for both drives. From here, you can just simply go to edit and paste that file in there and it'll show up. At this point, we've now rescued those files from that drive. If we go ahead and open them up on our external storage, we can see that they're actually there. We can see them. Uh, we can open them up. We can use them. If you wanted to manipulate those images through Nopix, you could. Um, or you can just simply reboot the machine. Once you get your version of Windows back up and running, you can simply plug that external storage back up. And you can dump those pictures back into it, and you're good to go. So just to make sure we can see that, we're going to go ahead and reboot the machine, and we're going to go ahead and pretend that our version of Windows 7 has been fixed, that we fixed it, and we're going to look at our external storage, just make sure that those files are there. If you're doing this as a practice, before you actually reformat anything, if you're having to actually rebuild your machine from ground up, you might want to take that external storage to another computer or your friend's computer or somewhere you can verify if that data works before you wipe it. That's just a good practice to get into. That way you don't accidentally wipe something that you don't have is a good way to put that. So you'll be prompted to remove the CD from the tray, hit enter once you're done, the machine will reboot. As I mentioned, this is an Ubuntu 11.10 and Windows 7 dual boot machine. So we have to go down and grub and select Windows 7. And here we have Windows booting up. Once Windows boots up, simply take the flash drive or external hard drive or whatever external storage you used, plug it up to the computer, let Windows 7 recognize it, then we'll go into the file explorer and make sure it's there. I ran into an issue the other week where I ended up having to use the Nopix Live CD to download drivers for the machine uh, to get on the network so I could be able to install them. So I downloaded the drivers through Nopix, stuck them on the Windows hard drive, and um, booted back into Windows and installed the drivers. So Nopix is a very versatile tool. Uh, most live Linux CDs are. You can notice if we go ahead and go through the file explorer, look at our external storage, there is in fact the pictures that we just rescued. So Nopix, like I mentioned earlier, is great for older computers. It's great for newer ones as well, but it's a little more straightforward with something like Ubuntu, which is of course a more popular Linux distribution nowadays than Nopix is. So to go ahead and cover that base, we'll go ahead and jump into Ubuntu and step you through how to rescue files using Ubuntu as well, in case you have one of those live CDs handy. Okay, let's go ahead and pretend that our Windows 7 partition is unbootable again, and we need to rescue the same directory from it using Ubuntu this time. I've already booted the machine with the Ubuntu Live CD in it, so now we're looking at the Welcome to Ubuntu screen. We just simply need to come down and left click on Try Ubuntu to go ahead and boot into the desktop. As I mentioned earlier, it's a little more straightforward through Ubuntu. We don't necessarily have to specify super user rights for the directories to get into, so it works a little more like using a version of Windows uh, is one way to think about it. So once we get to the desktop, I'll be able to demonstrate that. So here we go. Now, simply make sure your external storage is connected to the computer, uh, whether it's an external hard drive or USB flash drive. Uh, you'll notice we have Unity down the left-hand side. This is Ubuntu 11.10. I will simply launch the File Explorer, so click on the Home Folder icon. Here we go. You'll notice our other drives and partitions over here on the left. Uh, this is also detecting a couple of the external hard drives I have connected as well. Um, that's my, my passport hard drive. And down here is the 2 gigabyte USB stick I've got connected to the back of the machine also. So we just need to go up here to our Windows machine. And just as we did in Nopix, we need to navigate to the folder we want to rescue. So go to the Techie Smarts user folder. Go into Pictures. And there is the blog images directory that we rescued last time. Simply come back and we can right click on it. Come down to Copy click back over on our USB stick. I'm going to create a new folder uh, for the sake of this example and we'll call it Ubuntu Recovery. If I can spell we'd be okay. Sorry about that. Okay. 
Let's just start over. How's that sound? Ubuntu recovery. Go into that directory and we will just right click again and paste it back in. Or as I just did, control V will paste. And we go in and we can see those pictures. We can also manipulate them through Ubuntu as well. So, next thing we need to do is boot back into Windows. Make sure we can access those directories. So, likewise, unplug that at USB hard drive or USB flash stick. Go to another computer. Make sure that those files are there before you decide to wipe and reload anything. That way, it's there. Like I mentioned earlier, as long as your computer's BIOS will still see the hard drive, hopefully everything's okay to the point where you can still rescue your files. I've done this numerous times. It's very handy. I, I've basically become the hero for numerous people when they tell me, oh my gosh, I've got three kids and pictures from the majority of their childhood are on my computer and I think I've lost it all. In most cases, we've been able to, to bring a lot of that back. We have lost a few files here and there, but for the most part, the majority of those files are able to be rescued. So this is a way to do it. So there's not really a need to you know, unplug your computer, take it up to a big box store or to some help desk or computer guys and say I need to save my pictures. Because more than likely this is the way that they'll end up doing it. So I'm going to go ahead and eject the Ubuntu Live CD. Press enter. We'll reboot the machine, get back into Windows, and we will test that flash drive. As you can tell using the Ubuntu 11.10 Live CD, it's a little more straightforward. You don't have to right click and choose root access and all this. Even though it's not really a whole lot of trouble to do that, uh, it's, it's fairly straightforward. Uh, but it's a good practice to use multiple versions of live CDs. If nothing else, at least you know how to use more than just one version. Uh, for me, I typically use the Nopics for the older computers and the Ubuntu for the newer ones. Um, you know, it's just personally what I, I choose to do. But now that we're back in Windows, go ahead and click on Start and go to Computer. Make sure we can see our USB flash stick. If you haven't plugged it up yet, go ahead and connect it to the computer. And as you can see, here's our Ubuntu recovery file. And there's the directory that we rescued. You can see the two files. They're the same ones we rescued with Nopix. So that's it. That's it in a nutshell. Um, I've seen people who charge quite a bit of money to recover files. I uh, said, so do yourself a favor. You know, next time you have a problem, if you have a live Linux CD laying around, why not give it a shot first if, you know, really all you need is a live CD and a USB flash drive or external hard drive laying around. So, you know, save yourself a little trouble, maybe a little money, and you can get in there and check it out. As I mentioned earlier, a live CD is one of the primary tools that I, I keep with me when I bump into computer problems. They're handy. You can do all kinds of things from launching antivirus to rescuing the files. Uh, you know, you can also get into partitioning and things like that with certain Linux distributions. So they're handy to use. And they're handy to have. It's also good to know how to use more than just one as well. As I mentioned, Nopix has great hardware detection for newer and older machines, whereas Ubuntu has better detection for newer machines. Runs a little slower with the inclusion of Unity, but works great on, on newer hardware You know, within the last couple years. So, as always, thanks for watching. Be sure to hit us up on our blog. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook, and Google+. So leave us a comment, send us an email. If you have a tool you like, leave it in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching, and be sure you tune in next week to see what Techies Tool is next week. Thanks for watching.